We thought you might like us coming to you instead of sitting in a classroom. The beauty of this presentation, you can pause at any time or rewind. Each session we will provide a link for course materials and you can email us if you have any questions. However, we won't guarantee any answers. So let's get started. The training session that will be provided corresponds with the ABC certification exam need to know criteria. You can download this document at www.abccert.org. This session is all about untreated water, the impact of pollution, whether it's surface water or groundwater, the temperature changes in the reservoir, chemicals used for algae control, and how it's conveyed to the plant. EPA requires that all surface water must be treated, including groundwater under the influence of surface water. Now we're going to look at water quality. You might want to pause the video and write these categories down, including the definitions physical, chemical, biological, and radiological. The physical characteristics of water is what our customers complain about. The taste, odor, color, if you're in Arizona, it's too hot, or turbidity. When you look at this picture, you can imagine what effects it would have on taste, odor, and color. We refer to those conditions as eutrophic, which is rich in nutrients, and that that is poor in nutrients would be called oligotrophic. How would you pronounce that word? If you're not familiar with the water cycle, I suggest you pause the video, write down these terms, and look them up in the Water Treatment Fundamental PDF file you downloaded. We will focus on rain and runoff, and how they impact rivers, watersheds, reservoirs, and groundwater. In areas of poor air quality, acid rain changes the water characteristics, such as alkalinity. Runoff is a big issue if you're dealing with non-point pollution. Sanitary surveys considered the potential for contaminants for both surface and groundwater. We also have that consider the types of discharge from industry and the impact to water quality. I suggest you research these subjects. NPDES and C-A-F-O, those are acronyms, and also sanitary survey. Reservoirs and watersheds. Watersheds collect the water and reservoirs contain it, and they can vary in the depth. Also keep in mind recreational use and how it impacts water quality. Our focus will be on stratification. And again, if you're unfamiliar with these terms, pause the video, write it down so you'll remember them. ABZ exams are written for the United States. And believe it or not, even in Arizona, we freeze. But the quality of the water may differ in each state. As operators, we have to be aware of when the lake turns over. And this is why. When you go to the lake, and you're filling the water, you're thinking, oh, it's nice and warm. And then you dive in and you're in shock. Well, these levels explain why. That first level, the water tends to be warm and you do have higher levels of dissolved oxygen. The next level is where things get a little separated and you have both warm and cold. In wastewater, we refer to that zone as supernate. And then the bottom is where the water's the most dense. And we'll talk about the definitions in a little bit of aerobic versus anaerobic. So the lower DO levels, dissolved oxygen, is going to be on the bottom. 
what happens when the temperature changes, the water on top starts to warm up and it's gonna get heavier and it pushes the stuff from the bottom to the top, that's turnover. So that highly concentrated water with low dissolved oxygen comes up to the top, all the algae, the fish, if the DO is really low, they die off. And that's where we get taste and odor problems. You can use chemicals for algae control. You can use different types of aeration devices or mixing, depending upon the type of lakes and the depths that you have. We mentioned DO. That's dissolved oxygen. Aerobic is with oxygen. Anaerobic is without oxygen. And photosynthesis, in this case algae, turns water and carbon dioxide into food and releases oxygen during sunlight. At night, it works opposite without the sun. It releases carbon dioxide into the water and lowers the pH. This occurs when you have a lot of cloud cover also. There are several ways to treat algae. The most common is copper sulfate. But as you see here, copper sulfate can only work depending upon the alkalinity, the type of algae, and also temperature. Intakes and screens. Keep in mind, it depends on the depth of your raw water source. And the wonderful thing about how we pull water, we want to have that option to pull from different levels of those thermoclines. These pictures are showing you examples of how water can be drawn off of a lake. Also, to prevent large debris, we have to consider screening. Here you can see the screening is made out of a stainless steel, so corrosion control is an issue. The types of screening you might use may clog up. It could freeze. So there's maintenance that's involved with just the screening itself. Raw water can be gravity fed or it may require pumping. In future sessions, we will cover more in depth equipment maintenance and regulations. We hope this video introduced you to unfamiliar areas and will aid you in future studies. Thank you and we look forward to presenting more videos.